Hello. Hi, Raina Drop. Hello, peace of mind. Hello, real estate. Hi, Deborah. HG Downey. Hi, everybody. Hello. Hi, Cy Halo. Hey, Devin. Hey, everybody. Hi, Colin. Good morning. Hi, Mark Harpaul. Hello, hello. Hey, Sunless. Supernardo, Carlos. Sun One Shine. Hi. What's up, Stristen? Where y'all checking in from? Type in the comments where you're at. Let me know where you're at on the globe. It is windy today. It is cold. So if you hear me fumbling with my phone, it is because I'm trying to keep the wind off of the bottom of my phone where the microphone is. I have a little, a little, good morning, New York City. I have a little hand towel at the bottom of the phone here as a buffer for the wind. And while you guys are checking in, I'm gonna go ahead and get my introduction out of the way. Be sure to type in the comments where you're checking in from. We got LA, hey Morgan, hey T Tabs. Yeah, Minnesota, South Louisiana, awesome. So if you're new to my ministry, my name is Matt McMillan. I'm a Christian author. Norway, Pennsylvania, I have written seven books. Hello, dear Mississippi. All my books are available on Amazon. Check them out if you get some time. We got Australia. If you read any of my books, please go back and leave a review. I also have a podcast. The name of my podcast is Walk Talks with Matt McMillan. I'm recording the latest episode live on Instagram. If you want to be notified when I go live on Instagram, go to my profile and hit the notification button. Um, if you are listening to the podcast in the future, we got Houston, Birmingham, St. Pete, Tampa. Um, if you are listening to the podcast in the future, be sure to pause the podcast right now and leave me a review as long as you're in a safe spot. I'm also on YouTube, so if you're watching on YouTube, hit that red subscribe button. Give me a thumbs up, and if you want to be notified when I release a new Walk Talk, hit that bell button. I'm not a pastor. I'm a regular person just like you. The word pastor is only used once in the New Testament. It's in the book of Ephesians, and we see no list of authority. We see no list of qualifications. So the reason why I say that is I want you to be confident in who you are, not in a, in a position or a title, of somebody who has the title of pastor because it's not a title in the Bible. We don't need to attack them, but we just need to go back to the Bible and we need to understand this is a man-made title which was created by one individual around 100 AD named Ignatius of Antioch and it has snowballed into what it is today. But I'm not a pastor. I'm a regular person just like you. I want you to be confident in who you are and who Christ is and who you guys are together. If you want to contact me, I always welcome your interaction to get a hold of me. Just go to my, hey, let's go. Let's go. <laughs> just go to my website and go over to my contact page and I'll be glad to interact with you there. Now, while you're on my website, be sure to check it out. I got a lot of free resources that you can read on my website and be sure to sign up for my free daily devotional and it is the free daily newsletter tab on my website. All right, so let's get to today's walk talk. What was the thorn in Paul's side? Now, this is a question that has been going on for a very long time, and it's really easy to come up with what we might think that thorn in his side was, the thorn in his flesh. What was the thorn in Paul's flesh? But we just got to go back to scripture, and we have to read the surrounding passages to get some context. Now, in 2 Corinthians 12, we see that Paul has a thorn in his flesh. Most translations say flesh, thorn in his flesh. There's a couple that say thorn in my side. First of all, let's, let's be clear. This is, Paul is not referring to his literal flesh. Okay? And we're going to point that out today. Okay? He's also not talking about the flesh. Okay? So we got to be clear about those two things. So those two things I wanted to get out to in the beginning is he's not talking about his body. He's not talking about the flesh. He's saying there is somebody who was following me around causing me a lot of pain. That's the context. And we're going to go all the way back to 2 Corinthians chapter 10. We're going to go over 2 Corinthians chapter 10, 11, and 12 to get the context. How about that? I also want to point out that this thorn in Paul's flesh 
is not from God. Some people say, well, this is a thorn in Paul's flesh and it's just something that God gives you in order to teach you something and make you humble. No, this is from Satan. <laughs> God is not two-faced. He's not psychotic. He doesn't stick a thorn in your flesh and then, you know, cause you pain and then swoop around to the other side and say, let me comfort you. No, crazy people do that. All right. God's not crazy. So the thorn does not come from God. It comes as a messenger from Satan. Now I'm going to precipice this walk talk from the very beginning to tell you exactly what the thorn in his flesh is or was. Read the previous chapter. So this is 2 Corinthians 12, 7. To get what the thorn is, go back to 2 Corinthians, and we're going to go back to 2 Corinthians 10, but let's go back to 2 Corinthians 11 real quick. 2 Corinthians eleven twenty two tells us what the thorn is. 2 Corinthians eleven twenty two tells us what the thorn is. <laughs> it's the Hebrews, the Israelites. <laughs> <laughs> the descendants of Abraham. Okay, we're going to come back to that verse because it's going to make sense because not all of them were messengers from Satan, but the messengers from Satan were those who were attempting to push in the law with the gospel. All right. Now, so I want to debunk a couple things right off the bat. This is not a demon. All right. It is a messenger of Satan. And as we can see, based, based on 2 Corinthians eleven twenty two, 22, that the messenger of Satan is the Judaizers because he says who it is. <laughs> now, if we go to John chapter 8, Jesus says, your father is the devil. Why, who did he say that to? Did he say it to the woman caught in adultery? Did he say it to anybody who was struggling with any particular uh, sin? No, he said it to the self-righteous people who were looking to law observance for righteousness without believing God. He said, your father is the devil. All right, so, so we can see exactly what it is. Now, some people will say, oh, no, Matt, no, Matt. The, the thorn in his flesh is bad eyesight. He just couldn't see. So he, the thorn in his flesh, God gave him bad eyesight so that he would have this thorn in his flesh so that he wouldn't become conceited. And then that was it. That's not the context either. That's not in 2 Corinthians. That's over in Galatians. <laughs> and when he wrote Galatians, he didn't say anything about this being a thorn. He just said, and he didn't say he had bad eyesight. In 2 Corinthians, excuse me, in Galatians, I believe it's Galatians chapter, uh, I believe it's Galatians chapter six. Either way, it's in Galatians. Paul says, see that I write to you with large letters. All right, now, we would be guessing as to why he said that. Now it could be, see do I write with see how I write to you with such large letters? He, he could be saying, because this is emphasized, I'm emphasizing this to you. See, you know, we see it today <laughs> with the with the keyboard tough guys on <laughs> social media ministry. They type in all caps, such large letters to scream. Okay, so that could have been it. I don't know. Or it could also have been. You know, he couldn't see, he had poor eyesight, so he wrote with big letters. We don't know, but that's not the thorn. All right, let's get, let's go back to 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 10, 11, and 12. Now, let's go back to 2 Corinthians 10. So this is where it begins. This is the context for the thorn, 2 Corinthians 10. All right. Paul had gone from city to city to city to the Gentiles. Where was this? Corinth. What's Corinth? It's a Greek city. There's no Hebrew lineage here. It's a Gentile city. Pagan gods. My ancestors would have been there, you know, if I was in that area because I'm not Jewish. Okay, so he went and established the gospel. What is the gospel? Christ and Christ alone. But the Judaizers came behind him and said, yeah, that's great what Paul said, but you got to add in the law. How do we know this? We know this because we see it happening in Galatians, but we also see it happening here. And Galatia was another Greek city. Corinth, Greek city, 2 Corinthians 10. 
Paul said he is there to demolish every pretentious argument which sets itself up against the knowledge of God. I'm here to, to, to demolish every pretentious argument. What's a pretentious argument? If I'm acting pretentious, what would that be? Oh, look at me. I can talk really well. I know more than you. Oh, I am very well studied. I have a master's in linguistics. I have gone to this seminary. I, I, that's pretentious. Okay. So he was setting up arguments against that pretentiousness. Those pretentious arguments. Why were they pretentious? Why were they, ooh, look at me? Because they were judging themselves according to themselves. Who did that? The Pharisees, the Sadducees, the teachers of the law, the lawyers. So this is the Hebrews, the Israelites, those who were looking to the law for righteousness, the lost sheep of Israel. Now, whether or not these people who followed him into Corinth were believers or not, I'm not saying whether they were or not, but I'm saying they judged themselves according to themselves and they were making pretentious arguments against the knowledge of Jesus Christ. They were judging according to outward appearances, he says in 2 Corinthians 10. And then he says, you should not be boasting on anything except for boasting in the Lord. Were they boasting in the Lord? No, they were boasting in the law, their behavior, their pretentious, look at me, stuff. And Paul is saying, Stop this. Why are you coming in behind me and doing all this stuff? Okay. (sighs) But that's what it was. Pretentious arguments, boasting on everything except for the knowledge of Jesus Christ, which is the knowledge of God, judging people according to outward appearances. God does not judge according to outward appearances. He judges according to the heart. So these people, had they never believed in Jesus, who were coming in behind him, would have been the whitewashed tombs. Look beautiful and clean on the outside, but inside full of dead bones. You, Christian, you have a good heart. So no matter what you dress like, no matter what you look like, no matter what your outward appearance is, through your behavior or your wardrobe, that does not determine your heart. What does? Whether or not you have had the obedience of faith. What is the obedience of faith? Christ is the Messiah. I believe he's forgiven me by no work of my own. There, you are obedient from the heart. Romans chapter six says, you have become obedient from the heart. You received this gift of righteousness. They would not do that. Matter of fact, the next chapter says they were masquerading as servants of righteousness. Masquerading. What's masquerading? If I, have a, if I go to a masquerade ball, <laughs> you know, You wear a mask, masquerading as servants of righteousness. He calls them false apostles, deceitful workers. Okay, let's go back. 2 Corinthians 10. So he says it's pretentious arguments. They're boasting on everything except for the inward appearances, which they cannot see. So they're judging themselves according to themselves. Okay, then he goes on to 2 Corinthians 11 and he says, I am jealous for you. Who is he saying this to? This group whom he had just gone in and established this gospel, which is the gospel of grace. That's what he says in the book of Acts. The gospel of grace is the only true gospel. Okay. And he says, he starts out 2 Corinthians chapter 11. And this wasn't written in chapters and verses. Keep that in mind. That Those are added much later for referencing, for easy referencing. But 2 Corinthians 11, he starts out saying, I am jealous for you. I promised you to one husband. Christ. And now you are being tempted by a different gospel. What's the different gospel? Yeah, Jesus is great. We were there. We followed him around. We had conversations with him. We ate dinners with him. We saw all the miracles. Jesus is great, but Paul is wrong. Paul is wrong. You still need to obey these commandments. You need to do these things. And we see it today in our modern, hmm, calm down. (laughs) 
Ah, brakes pumped. <laughs> we see it today. Our modern church. You, mm, I don't know why I'm so triggered right now. Calm down. Mm. So often, people come to the Lord exactly as you are. He will accept you. But he's not going to leave you that way. See what they do? And even that, somebody's like, well, what's wrong with that? Because I'm talking about your identity. Come to the Lord. All are welcome. Come. But don't think he's going to leave you the same way you came. Behavior. They're talking about behavior. <laughs> They're not talking about identity because if they did, then they, would say, they wouldn't say that because they know nothing that you can do can sustain, maintain, or change your identity because you were crucified, buried, resurrected one time by grace through faith and they don't get it. Get off of it. Get off of it. Get off of it. Stick to the message. I'm going to stick to the... Paul dealt with it too. Paul dealt with it. 2 Corinthians 11, he's saying, I'm jealous for you guys. You know, you started out with Jesus. This is the only person that you were to be married to. I promised you to Jesus. I said, Jesus is the only way. I did not come into Corinth teaching you any part of the law. And now you are being deceived in the same way Eve was. And you, you want this knowledge of good and evil. You don't need the knowledge of good and evil. That's a different gospel. Go back to the gospel I taught you. Okay? And then he continues. And then he begins to defend his ministry. You know? Paul, think of, think of how Paul felt. Here Paul is just doing everything he could possibly do to bring people to Christ and to the grace and knowledge of Jesus Christ. But yet he used to be a persecutor of the church, the chief of all those guys, dragged people from their homes. He gave approval to the first Christian martyr being stoned. Imagine it. So they could come in behind Paul in Corinth and say, well, we know who that guy is. Don't believe him. You need to behave like us, not him. We know about his past. So think about Paul. <laughs> if you think you feel bad about your past, and now you're talking about Jesus and people say bad things about you, think about Paul. <laughs> you know, it just puts everything in perspective for me <laughs> personally, because I say the same thing as Paul and I get attacked on the daily, on the hourly. <laughs> I'm used to it. It's it, it doesn't bother me. Let's just say that. The days of letting that bother me are way behind me. Okay, but Paul went through it too. So Paul begins to defend his, his ministry. And just think as he's writing this, he's like, oh, yeah, I did all those bad things. So he says, you know what? I, I'm not a super apostle. What's a super apostle? A super apostle would have been somebody who walked with Jesus Somebody who was personally taught by Jesus before he was crucified. Then this is my opinion here. This is my opinion. You could take it or leave it. But I believe one of these so-called super apostles was James. <laughs> because if James came into town, he'd be like, oh, no, don't listen to Paul. Listen to me. Jesus is my brother. And what was James doing? <laughs> we see in Acts 15, James was still pushing in the law with the gospel. We see in Acts 21, James was still pushing in the law with the gospel. But that's just my opinion. Take it or leave it. But a super apostle would have been somebody who Paul is, and he even puts air quotes on it. Super apostles. A super apostle. You know, somebody who <laughs> was taught by Jesus. It, I'm not one of the super apostles. And he goes on to say, I'm not even good at speaking. So when I show up and I don't stand up and I'm just this amazing, great orator who knows everything and says everything without stuttering or never messing up or never has any type of emotions or is just a robot and I can just say it and you're impressed by what I say. That's not me. I'm not good at speaking. I'm not a trained speaker. 
but I still have knowledge. Oh, I love that so much. It makes me confident because I'm not a trained speaker. I have a country accent. I mess up on my walk talks all the time. I say a Bible verse and then I listen to my walk talk the next day just to proof listen. And I'm like, oh, that was on the wrong chapter. So I mess up. And so here Paul is, 2 Corinthians 11, saying, I'm not a trained speaker, but I have knowledge. Same, same Paul. <laughs> I got some knowledge. What's his knowledge? The knowledge of Jesus Christ. I don't want to know anything except for Jesus. That's it. I'm going to go back to Jesus. You got all that dispensationalism, Arminianism, blah, blah, Calvinism, blah, 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 all these fancy words. I don't give a crap about that stuff. Jesus. So when somebody approaches me in the comments section or messages me and they're trying to act super, super intelligent with all of these fancy words, I'm just like, delete. I don't give a rip about that. I don't need to know all the details on uh, complementarianism, egalitarianism. I know what they all mean, but I'm not going down that path with you because that does not matter. That knowledge does not matter. What matters is Christ. Go argue with somebody else. I'm not interested. I don't get up in the morning and say, who can I argue with about this? I never do that. I'm like, I want to help somebody be confident in Jesus. That's my goal. Christ. 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 I'm not a trained speaker. Paul wasn't a trained speaker. <laughs> Didn't go to seminary. <laughs> Self-taught. <laughs> As a matter of fact, the first seminary wasn't even established until the year 1784. So how did they know anything before that year? Hmm. The spirit, the spirit, it's in here. He's in here. He's not an it. I shouldn't have said it. It is a he or he is a he. <laughs> the spirit from the beginning of time, you know, your creator because of the spirit and it continues on today. All right. So he says, I'm not a trained speaker. I'm not a trained speaker, but I got some knowledge. I'm not a super apostle. No, I, I, I was, I was against these people. That's true. But am I a Hebrew? Yes, I am. Am I an Israelite? Yes, I am. Am I a descendant of Abraham? Yes, I am. All right, so yes, I get to brag now. So I'm going to brag on everything they can brag on, but I'm going to make sure you know I am bragging on foolishness because this doesn't matter. But let's just go ahead and brag because if we're going to compare resumes, I was flogged. I was stoned. I was left for dead. I was beaten. I took lashes. I was shipwrecked. I was left out to sea for a, a day and a night. I got, I was in danger from the Jews. I was in danger from the Gentiles. I faced death everywhere I went. I had to be lowered down a city wall in a basket. I was naked. I was cold. I was hungry. I was tired. So what? So yeah, I can boast. God even showed me things that he didn't show any of these people. So what? Who cares? It's not about how many books you write. It's not about how many followers you got. It's not about how many likes you get on each post. It's not about what you accomplish it is about the message so many people they just give in to a different message because it's not popular and by the grace of god the <laughs> this message still goes strong because we have the people who like paul they're like i don't care about the religious system rejecting me i'm going to stick to Jesus. I'm married to him alone. I'm not going to go back to a different gospel. <sighs> Second Corinthians 12, he says, messenger of Satan, this thorn in my flesh. And I begged God three times to take it away. Take these Judaizers away. I'm going to all these cities for you and doing all this stuff. Why are you letting them do this? I'm talking about Jesus and I could do more than them if I was still doing that. 
I did more than them. What'd God say? My grace is sufficient. His grace is enough. No matter what you're going through, what kind of persecution, what kind of hardship, if you are not going back to the law, if you're not going back to religious efforts, you're going to you're going to face it. And you're going to beg God to just open up the eyes of these people who are Judaizing the gospel and he's going to say my grace is sufficient. My grace is sufficient. My power is made perfect in your weakness. And Paul said, what? well, then I will brag all the more about my weakness. I will delight in hardships. I will delight in these persecutions. I will delight in everything that is coming to me from these people in these situations. When I am weak, I am strong. Same for you, friend. God's grace is enough. You don't have to defend yourself. You don't have to fight them. It's enough. It's enough. Paul goes on to say, <laughs> I will continue to make a fool of myself. <laughs> you ever feel like that? Yeah, I do. You know, I, I, I express confidence. You, you probably watch my videos, my TikToks, read my stuff, and you're like, mm, Matt's confidence. But I feel foolish now and again. I feel foolish. <laughs> Same thing with Paul. And, and he continued in his foolishness. If that's what foolishness is, call me a fool. <laughs> if this is what foolishness is, call me a fool. I don't care. I would rather you not. I would rather us get along. But if me being labeled a fool like Paul is coming from those who were setting up pretentious arguments against the knowledge of Jesus Christ, judging themselves according to themselves, bragging on everything they had done, masquerading as servants of righteousness, call me a fool. If they want to use their title, back then it was super apostle. There's titles now. <laughs> you can even, <laughs> there's titles now. You know, people think I, I pick on pastors. I don't pick on pastors. I don't pick on pastors any more than Paul picked on the super apostles. He's going back to the gospel. That's what matters. That's what matters. I go back to, to the gospel. That's what matters. If I ever got on here and I said, obey your pastor, serve your pastor. Oh, you better, you better respect that great man of God. I would be lying to you. I would be setting up pretentious arguments that go against the knowledge of God. I would be judging you according to them. And it's error, but we don't attack. We preach the gospel. And when we preach the gospel, people say we're attacking. Why do you discourage people from going to church, Matt? I don't. <laughs> never. I've never discouraged anybody from stop going to church. Never. But that's what they hear because the religious system is predicated on a edifice named church with a quote leader, quote super apostle named pastor. But even hearing that, you know, if your conscience is seared with legalism, you're like, eh, eh. I'm not against any of that. <laughs> I'm for Jesus. So if you decide to be involved with that, that is your prerogative. Far be it from me to tell you to stop doing something or start doing something. But I'm saying the gospel, the gospel. Paul dealt with the same thing. I'm talking about the one whom I promised you to, Jesus. <laughs> Said the same thing. But they came in behind Paul. Oh no, don't listen to Paul. He used to go to the temple. Now he, he doesn't keep the Sabbath. 
you need to keep the Sabbath. Oh, don't listen to McMillan. He used to go to this place and this place. Now he doesn't. I'm not against going to a specific place. But there's no specific place in my vicinity <laughs> that teaches anything opposed to a law-grace mixture. It's not there. Like, I have no place surrounding me that teaches the new covenant. Everything in my vicinity is about hierarchies, prosperity gospel, law-grace mixture, <laughs> or just flat-out law. You know, <laughs> I used to submit myself to that stuff just to be involved with it. And my life was not going very well. Okay. If there was some place around here that was set up like first Corinthians 11 through 14, I would probably hang out there, but I'm not subjecting myself to ministry of death, ministry of death, ministry of death, ministry of death, super apostle, super apostle, super apostle. I'm not doing it. So I'll be a fool. I'll be a fool like Paul. Now, if anything like that ever comes to pass or, you know, maybe I decide to go somewhere here local, who knows? But I'm not against church. Go if you want to go. You might be involved with the church. You love it. Great. Keep going. Far be it from me to tell you not to do something or to do something. I just want to point to the one you're ultimately promised to. And it ultimately is promised to you, Jesus. So, so what was the thorn in Paul's flesh? It was <laughs> 2 Corinthians eleven twenty two tells us the Hebrews, the Israelites, descendants of Abraham, those who came in behind him were trying to set up pretentious arguments against the knowledge of Jesus Christ. It's not a demon. Christians cannot be possessed by a demon. You're sealed up with the spirit. He told the Ephesians that you think he's going to share your body with a demon. Demons can't touch you. First John chapter five says the evil one cannot even touch you. So it's not a demon. Colossians chapter two says the demonic realm was disarmed at the cross. The only thing the demonic realm can do is accuse you of not being righteous and not being forgiven. That's it. Or make you think that <laughs> you do something to get those things or maintain those things. So, all right, guys. So I hope this has encouraged you today. I hope it's brought to light. Maybe some error about 2 Corinthians 12, the flesh, the thorn in Paul's flesh. And I hope it's brought to light um, the easiness of the gospel. All right. So always tell the truth about yourself. What's the truth? You're righteous. You're holy. You're blameless. You're a new creation. You're a child of God. And you are awesome. So always tell the truth about yourself and always be yourself. Love y'all.